Welcome back to another fun-filled episode of Kristen's Nuggets of Knowledge. I'm Kristen Maka with Futurity First Insurance Group. Now today, if you can't tell, we will be going over Medicare Part D or Medicare's prescription drug plan. So D, drugs. Easy to remember, right? I know it is. And now Medicare Part D is a little bit more intricate than some of the other parts. And so I want to break it down into a couple different sections over the next couple of weeks to make it a little bit more digestible, so to speak. So let's go grab the first part of Medicare Part D nugget of knowledge. Let's go, shall we? 80% of Medicare individuals utilize prescription drugs. Now, since prescription drugs not only are costly, but also Part A and Part B really don't take care of your day-to-day -day drugs, it only seems logical to create a plan specifically for them. So that's why Part D was created. Now, the government does not offer plans like they do Part A and Part B. Rather, they regulate the plans and they let the private insurers provide the plans. So the different credible coverages that you can have in Part D are either, you know, if you're still working and as a beneficiary on a worker's plan, either you or your spouse have coverage that way. If you are part of the VA, that is credible coverage, getting your prescriptions from the VA. And also if you have a standalone prescription drug plan, otherwise known as a PDP, or if you have a Medicare Advantage plan with a prescription drug coverage, so an MAPD. All of those plans provide you with credible coverage. Now, Part D is very, very similar to Part A and Part B, where if you decide to defer the Medicare coverage and don't have credible coverage in place, you'll have to pay a penalty. And the penalty for Part D is 1% for every month that you decide to defer. So let's give an example. Now that percentage has to do with the national average. So you decide to pick a plan that's $15, but the national average is $40, and you have deferred your Part D plan for three, <laughs> three years, so 36 months. So we need to take the $40 and multiply it by 36%, and we get $14.40. That $14.40 is going to be then tacked on to your premium indefinitely. So for some people, it honestly just makes sense to get the prescription drug coverage and pay for a very, very low cost plan and have that coverage in place just in case stuff happens. And then that way we also protect ourselves from a future penalty payment. Now let's dive into the plans a little bit. The government regulates the plans. It doesn't make it standardized, okay? So unlike a Medicare supplement where a plan G is a plan G no matter what company you go with, or a plan N is a plan N no matter what company you go with, a prescription drug plan can be different throughout all the different companies. But the differences happen within the drug formulary, okay? The government regulates the payment sections. So there are four different payment sections. There's, you know, a deductible, an initial stage, then you have your donut hole, and then your catastrophic. So the government regulates the monies happening within that payment line up. But other than that, the companies can do as they please as far as what drugs that they want to take on and how they want to price structure those drugs. So let's go over that. Bam! It's just like magic. So <laughs> each company is allowed to choose the drugs which they want to put on their formulary. And within their formulary, they have different tiers. I've got them all set up. So typically it's tiers one through five. Your tier one and tier two are typically your non-expensive generic, then your a little bit more expensive generic, then you may often have your preferred brand name drugs, 
and then your more expensive brand name drugs, and then your specialty drugs for your tier five. And as you can see on the cards, as we go up in tiers, we also go up in price. Now, each company is allowed to structure these tiers and the drugs on their formularies as they please. Now, let's go over a couple examples. So let's say company A has a specific set of drugs that they are going to represent. Ta-da, here we go. So we are looking at company A and company A has two different plans. And in both plans, they represent all of these prescription drugs. They are on the formulary, but the two different plans differ in that the first plan is structured to have more generic drugs and more regular drugs. Uh, ones maybe like metformin or atrovastatin, things like that. You know, they don't have a lot of specialty drugs to be available at a cheaper price. So a low premium cost and a lot of cheaper prescriptions on the lower tiers. So let's set that up and see what that looks like. So just generically thrown stuff out here. We have more of our generic stuff, okay? And not that many high tiered items available. Now on their second plan, they still represent these, but that plan is geared more towards people who need the specialty items. So they wanna make these specialty items a little bit more affordable, yet at the same time, not hurt them too much on some of the other you know, costs within the plan. So they may decide to move a lot of these more generic brands up to a higher tier so that maybe they can move some of their more specialty drugs down a tier and make them a little bit more affordable for individuals. But as I said, you know, that premium cost is more than likely gonna be double or triple the price of that first plan that they have. Company B offers some of these, but you know, they, they don't really wanna offer these ones or this one. Okay, but there are several other prescriptions that they do cover. All right, and so they themselves, and this is what I'm, the point is, is these plans aren't standardized. They can offer several different plans, having several different formularies, and have them go through several different tiering structures. Another thing that you wanna think about, along with all these different formularies changing and the tiers changing, is the manufacturers can change their pricing throughout the year, as well as the pharmacy that you go to. And this is why it is a very important to look at your prescription drug plan every single year. I know myself, as well as several other agents, do provide a service, a free service, every year for individuals to look at their prescription drugs and to help them find the best plan out there for them. If you are willing and able to do it by yourself on Medicare.gov, you are more than welcome to go do that. I know myself, I would want to have an agent available and local if possible to be able to help me somebody that I can actually call and talk to and not wait on the phone forever before I actually get somebody to talk to to be able to help me out and that's why you know when you go through an agent and not through the medicare.gov website that's what you get you get the personal touch of your agent next week we'll be going over more or less the pricing structure of those four phases that I talked about, the deductible, the initial coverage, and all that good jazz. Until then, God bless you, be safe, and have a fantastic week. Oh, I almost forgot. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel and you find these videos very informative for you or for somebody else, please click that little subscribe button there and that will let you know whenever a new video of mine comes out. Thanks so much. Bye.